Released in 1999, Galaxy Quest tells the story of a washed up cast of actors of an old hit science fiction TV show, also called Galaxy Quest, led by its arrogant has been main star Jason Nesmith, played by Tim Allen, where the fed up cast members have now resulted to just appearing at conventions. Nesmith is approached by some strange alien beings called the Fermions to help them from a deadly threat, where he thinks the invite is another convention show. Little does he know that he and the rest of the cast will be embarking on a real space adventure, as the Fermions think that the Galaxy Quest TV show is real and called on the actors for help. The crew of actors must put aside their differences and act out their parts for real, as they become real space heroes in order to stop an evil reptilian creature called Saris from getting his hands on a dangerous power source called Omega-13. In this Star Trek inspired science fiction comedy classic, which also stars Sigourney Weaver and Alan Rickman. So today we are going to embark on an intergalactic journey as we look into 10 things that you didn't know about Galaxy Quest. Let's check it out. Number 10, Galaxy Quest grew from an interest from being typecast. Galaxy Quest came from the mind of writer David Howard when he visited an IMAX cinema and was greeted with a trailer for a space movie which had a voiceover narration from Leonard Nimoy, aka Spock from Star Trek. This got Howard thinking about the rest of the cast and crew from the original Star Trek series and how they have pretty much been pigeonholed as their characters unable to escape their roles they played in the famous science fiction series. Howard then had a true stroke of creative genius where he wondered what if the cast of Star Trek actually got caught up in a real space adventure with real aliens? Kind of like an intergalactic version of Free Amigos where he then wrote the script and sold it to DreamWorks. Howard went on to say that, in many ways, the script wrote itself. Number 9. DreamWorks made drastic changes to the script When DreamWorks brought the script to Galaxy Quest, it was a fairly new production company, which was co-founded by Steven Spielberg, and it had already released several movies, such as Deep Impact, Small Soldiers, Saving Private Ryan and Ants, among others. Producer Mark Johnson saw great potential in Galaxy Quest, but he still felt that many changes had to be made. For example, the movie's original title was Captain Starshine, which although is an interesting name, it still lacks that Star Trek inspired space adventure feel that Galaxy Quest has. Also in the original script, the Alexander Dane character, who was played brilliantly by Alan Rickman, was going to turn out to be the movie's main villain, which, although would have been a shocking twist, probably was a bad move, as I can't really see it making any sense whatsoever. But hey, I'm probably just saying that because I love the Alexander slash Dr. Lazarus character, and I just struggle to see the concept of him being the movie's baddie. Number 8. Original Director DreamWorks hired Harold Ramis to direct Galaxy Quest. Ramis had an impressive resume in the movie industry, not just for his starring roles but also co-writing Animal House and Ghostbusters, as well as directing National Lampoon's Vacation and Groundhog Day. So where did it go wrong for Ramis? Well, for the movie's main lead, Jason Nesmith, Ramis wanted an action star who wasn't known for comedy, and his number one choice for the role was Alec Baldwin, but he turned the part down. The studio then approached Steve Martin and Kevin Klein, but they also turned the part down. Tim Allen, who during the 90s had great success with Home Improvement and Toy Story, was cast in the role. Ramis, however, wasn't fully sold on the idea of Tim Allen in the part, so... Yeah, he left the project, and he went on to direct Bedazzled instead. Directing duties of Galaxy Quest were then given to Dean Parasot, who had previously directed the comedy Home Fries, and interestingly has recently directed the upcoming Bill and Ted Face the Music. Ramus would supposedly go on to say that after watching Galaxy Quest, he felt that Tim Allen did a great job in the movie after all. Number 7, Tim Allen left another science fiction movie to star in Galaxy Quest. 
In 1998, Tim Allen was cast to play the lead role of Andrew the Android in the comedy science fiction drama Bicentennial Man. However, during the early production of that movie, he was also offered the role as Nesmith in Galaxy Quest. Allen knew that he could not star in both movies and could only choose one, so he chose Galaxy Quest, where Robin Williams replaced him for the Andrew part in Bicentennial Man. And given that Galaxy Quest has gone on to become a beloved classic among science fiction fans, and that Bicentennial Man has now somewhat become forgotten, he probably made the best choice. Allen said that when he first got the script, it was more of Harold Ramis' vision of the movie, and said that it felt more like Spaceballs, which makes me think that it was going to be more of a slapstick science fiction spoof, unlike the final film, which is more grounded in reality, be that a reality that has very funny moments, rather than being a wink and nudge at the audience that the whole thing is one big joke. Sigourney Weaver loved the script for Galaxy Quest, and when she first read it, she likened it to The Wizard of Oz, in that at the start of the movie, the characters seem incomplete, but thanks to their adventure, they become more fulfilled and become the heroes that they always envisioned themselves to be. You know, I've never looked at it like that before, but yeah, that totally makes sense. Galaxy Quest is like The Wizard of Oz, the Star Trek version. Number six, no swearing in this space adventure. It was always intended for Galaxy Quest to be given a widespread PG rating, meaning a film that families with young children can go and see. And DreamWorks really wanted a PG movie that kids could go and see, as it was going to be competing against the Rugrats movie in the box office. However, an original cut of the movie was, surprisingly enough, given an R rating, on the account of the amount of swear words used. Now, PG and even PG-13 rated movies can often have the odd F word snuck in there, but to be met with an R rating means that Galaxy Quest must have been a movie with a lot of swear words. I personally don't mind the odd swear word here and there, as it can be used to great effect, especially in this case where we have normal actors in extraordinary circumstances, aka going on dangerous space adventures and battling alien monsters. So naturally, the odd F word here and there could actually be quite funny. However, it was decided to play it safe and remove all the cuss words, so Galaxy Quest could get its PG certificate. Something that is often brought up with fans is a scene where Sigourney Weaver's Gwen character says, screw that. Well, screw that. Many have noticed that if you pay attention to her mouth, she's actually saying F that. So what do you guys think? Would Galaxy Quest have been funnier if it had a few F-bombs thrown in there? Or is it better as a PG movie with less Fs and more screws? Number five, one of the best Star Trek movies despite not being a Star Trek movie. No doubt about it, Galaxy Quest takes a heavy influence from Star Trek, as the actors and the fictional Galaxy Quest show in the movie is clearly a comical take on the hit science fiction series. However, Galaxy Quest has gone on to become a movie embraced by Star Trek fans. Supposedly, some viewers often mistake it for being an actual Star Trek movie. Even several cast and crew members whom have worked on Star Trek have gone on to praise Galaxy Quest. Even though Galaxy Quest is not a Star Trek movie, I guess people fell in love with the idea of the real-life actors from Star Trek getting caught up in a real space adventure and battling aliens, and that's probably where its appeal to Star Trek fans comes from. In fact, Galaxy Quest is such a well-loved non-Star Trek movie, in 2013 it was voted as the seventh best Star Trek movie by Star Trek fans at a Las Vegas convention, which is quite an accomplishment considering once again it's not a Star Trek movie. So it makes you wonder if people see Galaxy Quest as a Star Trek movie in spirit. You know, a Star Trek movie that isn't directly called Star Trek. Number four, the Brandon character could have been played by someone else. There is a vast cast of talented actors in Galaxy Quest whom I haven't mentioned yet in this video, such as Sam Rockwell, Daryl Mitchell, Tony Shellhaub, and of course, Justin Long. Long has gone on to become an accomplished actor, although to me, I'll always know him as that walrus abomination from Tusk. And Galaxy Quest was his first movie role, where he played Brandon, a dedicated fan of the fictional Galaxy Quest TV show. A role which even earned him a Saturn Award nomination for Best Performance by a Young Actor. Yet, thanks to his starting performance in Galaxy Quest, he went a long way. 
However, there were several other actors who were eager to play the part of Brandon, as other actors also auditioned for the part, including Kieran Culkin, Tom Everett Scott, and Eddie K. Thomas, all of whom I think would have done a good job, but thankfully for Long, they didn't get the part, and well, he did, where he exceeds at playing the ultimate fanboy. Interestingly, Rain Wilson also shows up in Galaxy Quest as one of the Fermions, but he's more of a background character, and apparently most of his scenes were actually cut out from the final film. Number 3. Comic Book Series For years, fans of Galaxy Quest have been eager for a sequel, wanting to see continuing adventures from Commander Peter Quincy Taggart, aka Nesmith and his crew. Tim Allen did hint that there would finally be a sequel in 2014, but sadly in 2016, the passing of Alan Rickman put the project to a stop, with many of the cast and crew, including Sam Rockwell, saying that a sequel couldn't happen without Rickman. However, what some fans may not know is that there already has been sequels of sorts with a Galaxy Quest comic book series. The comics were published by IDW, which released a first series in 2008, and then a follow-up series in 2015. The comics pick up where the movie left off, with the Galaxy Quest crew starring in a new TV series called Galaxy Quest The Journey Continues, where another disaster happens and the crew once again have to act as real space heroes in order to save the day. Firstly, the illustrations in this comic are absolutely spot on and really capture the characters' personalities. In fact, the world of Galaxy Quest looks great in comic book format and shows that the franchise can easily live on on the printed page. So if you're a fan who just has to know what happens next after the movie, there will always be the comic books to act as a continuation. Now, I don't think the comics have been very mainstream, but those who have read them seem to have a love for them. Number 2. Promotional Mockumentary In 1999, as a promotion for the movie, E! News aired a mockumentary TV special, which is about the fictional Galaxy Quest TV show acting as if it was real. I guess you could say it's a documentary that exists in the Galaxy Quest movies universe, in which the special celebrates the 20th anniversary of the Galaxy Quest TV series. It features interviews from Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, and Alan Rickman, playing the actors from the show talking about their time while making the fictional science fiction series. Which, when you think about it, is a stroke of promotional genius, and gives the viewers an insight into the characters, along with the show, so they know what's going on and are brought up to speed when they go to watch the movie. There are even interviews from the fans of the show, as well as other crew members like Stan Winston. What I love most about the mockumentary is how when it's talking about the fictional Alexander Dane character who was played by Alan Rickman, it shows images from his previous performances, including images of Rickman as the Sheriff of Nottingham from Robin Hood Prince of Thieves. That just really makes me chuckle. It's like the special is saying it was Alexander Dane who played the Sheriff of Nottingham. The mockumentary explores how the actors felt about the show's abrupt 1982 cancellation. Nesmith explains that it was great doing the show, as it meant that he didn't need to be a special guest star on other shows like Fantasy Island and The Love Boat. The Gwen character reveals that at one stage, her and Nesmith were actually engaged, and it's even explained that Orson Welles was offered to direct an episode. And the mockumentary even pokes fun at Home Improvement, where it's explained that Nesmith starred in a TV show called Hello Neighbor, where he played a neighbor whose face you couldn't see. In other words, a callback to Wilson. Uh? It's also explained that Galaxy Quest was going to be a western called West Quest, before being told that westerns were no longer popular. And then the show was going to be about Navy SEALs, till the production got access to props from an old space movie. This special is a must for fans of the show, as it gives a deeper insight into the world seen in the movie. Number 1. Galaxy Quest Takes Off when DreamWorks first saw the final edited movie of Galaxy Quest, they were slightly disappointed with the final product, as they felt it didn't quite deliver what the original script promised. I mean, let's not forget that Tim Allen said that he felt that one of the earlier scripts seemed more like Spaceballs. However, DreamWorks still agreed to release Galaxy Quest in order for the company to compete against Stuart Little. However, it seems that DreamWorks lost confidence in the movie and didn't really promote it, despite being released during the popular Christmas season. And what's worse is the primary trailer used clips from an early cut of the movie which featured special effects that were incomplete. 
Some of the cast and crew felt that the lack of promotion and the trailer affected Galaxy Quest from reaching a wider audience. However, upon its release, Galaxy Quest grew in popularity, where it went on to make an impressive $90.7 million on a $40 million budget, so it doubled its money, making it a success. It didn't do as well as Stuart Little, but still did better than DreamWorks had expected. And DreamWorks producer, Jeffrey Katzenberg, apparently even apologized to director Dean Parasot for not utilizing a full promotion of Galaxy Quest. However, Galaxy Quest has gone on to become a cult classic, a movie fully loved and enjoyed by its fans, and a movie whose popularity has increasingly grown in time. And I would say that in the long run, its popularity has exceeded Stuart Little, but that's just me speculating. In fact, in 2012, it was added to the Reader's Digest list of funniest movies of all time. So yes, regardless of first impressions, Galaxy Quest is a big deal and is an important movie. It has plenty of laughs and excitement and shows us that even if you're washed up and you feel like your best is behind you, you'll never know what's around the corner. And it's never too late to strive to greatness, as even has-been actors can still become brave heroes. Galaxy Quest is just lots of fun. A pure escapism riot. It's the ultimate movie for lovers of science fiction fandoms, as it has the desirable aspect of what if your favourite fandom actually became real, and I think that that's the movie's biggest appeal that has made fans fall in love with it. It has plenty of laughs and is a good popcorn movie, so I definitely say watch it. Anyway, I'm Minty, and remember, never give up, never surrender. See ya!